Hi guys, thanks for coming and joining us tonight. It's gonna to be a fun, fun uh, recipe for you to do at home today. Uh oh, they're saying we can't, we have to have our phone rotated. We're having technical. There's me. Is oh, that are better? we live right now? I think we're live, yeah. Okay guys, we're having a little bit of a technical problem, so let's hope Eric gets it straightened out. They don't want, they, they want us to do upright instead. Who's they? Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is giving us orders. Can you believe this? All right, let's take a peek. They say we have to hold it up like this now. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's crazy. It worked for the last one. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Well, something just happened and Facebook is making us hold the phone straight up and down. So I hope I didn't lose Eric. Did I lose you as an assistant now? Oh. Let's see if we can rotate it while it's live. Uh, no, it says rotate. Your phone can't rotate while recording. <laughs> uh oh. So okay. we're gonna get things started. All right. Okay. So what's gonna happen? I'm sorry about that. Facebook changed some rules or something because we normally always uh, did it long ways. Okay. Today we're gonna make a super easy recipe that's gonna be a lot of fun and really taste delicious. Basically, it's just a couple of ingredients: some potatoes. A little bit of flour, a little bit of bacon powder, so salt and pepper, and an egg or two. Woo. Okay. All right, I'm getting this situated here. You are? Okay. okay. All right. So, what, a couple of things you want to get ready. You want to get a frying pan ready, then add about a quarter of a cup of oil to that. Um, you're going to get your eggs ready, some flour, and some potatoes. If I get my assistant back, I'm going to have him <laughs> do it. But if not, I'll start to peel the potatoes just so that we don't um, have a problem. So, it's going to take about four potatoes. Um, I'm using russet, russet potatoes here today. I kind of like them the best. But you can use yellow potatoes, which are like Yukon Gold. You can use red potatoes, um, white potatoes, really any kind that you want. You know what? You don't even have to use potatoes. You could use zucchini, carrots, all different kinds of vegetables. But um, the classic, traditional Pennsylvania Dutch recipe is for potatoes. And the reason why a lot of families did use this recipe back in the day is because potatoes were always very accessible, very affordable, and it's a hearty meal. So you can feed a, a family, a big family, which they had back then in, in those days. You had to have eight or nine kids. So you needed to feed them very inexpensively. So I am, I know I'm supposed to do it away from me, but I'm lefty, I do everything backwards. <laughs> so I'll just peel these up here. And um, only about four potatoes is, is enough for, um, you know, a standard family of four. But you can make more if you want, or less. I'm back. You're back. <laughs> Very good. All right. So while he's washing his hands and everything, I'm going to show you um, the grater. I'm going to pull out a handy little grater here. I'm going to use this side right here, which is the standard cheese grater. And I'm going to just shred these potatoes. Okay. So you're going to notice that sometimes the potatoes turn brown if you don't work fairly quickly. That's fine. What we're going to do with this is we're going to throw this in some cold water. Okay. As we're shredding it, I'm going to pull, I'm going to be dropping them in cold water. The cold water does two different things. It actually helps prevent the potatoes from um, turning brown, and it also it also actually removes some of the starch, so you get crispier uh, potato pancakes. Ooh. Okay. Another name for potato pancakes would be latkes. They are very popular. This you know at this time of year, and because. They're in the Jewish culture, they eat those during Hanukkah and the holidays. And the reason, the difference between a latke and a potato pancake is the omission of baking powder. So that's it. So this is some really cold ice water. This is not absolutely a mandatory thing, but I find that by removing some of the starch from the potatoes, I definitely get a crunchier uh, potato pancake. And this applies to French fries and uh, anything, any kind of potato that you're frying. Right, if hash you, browns. Yeah, or, or little chips. Yeah. And believe it or not, a potato pancake is basically a hash brown. 
That's pretty much what it is. Don't tell me about that. So that's two potatoes worth. Two, one potato, two potato. Yeah, I'm going to check and see. Um, uh, Stephanie says we miss you. Brisinda says hello. Oh, hi, Brisinda. Uh, hi, Christine, Stephanie. Christine says she loves our cooking. Oh, uh, thank you so much. We have fun here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, feel free to ask us questions as we're moving along. We're happy to help you with anything. Yes. Uh, any issues that you encounter about this recipe. Right. Yeah. Well, um, okay, I'll let you do that. So another thing, too, is I'm going to start my oil in the pan because I want to get that nice and hot. Not so hot that we start seeing smoke come now. I don't want to send out smoke signals, <laughs> which I've had a rest. I've, I've had an incident or two with that, right? <laughs> so I'm going to take. Um, I'm going to be using corn oil here today. You can use vegetable oil. You can use peanut oil. You can use olive oil, but you have to really watch it because olive oil has a lower smoking point. It doesn't really, you know. You could, some people want to use coconut oil or whatever. I guess you can, but you really have to watch it because it tends to burn a little faster with those kinds of oils. And butter will burn. Yes. Yep. Straight up butter will burn. But you can always add a little blob of butter to the corn oil. Because that adds a little extra flavor. Okay. Ooh, have a okay. Got it? All right. Let me mix this up a little bit yep. before we strain it. Ooh. It is cold water. Okay. All right. There we go. So normally I would let this soak for about 10 minutes to get all of the um, starch out of the potatoes. But right now I'm just going to rush it up and I'm going to stir it a little while. Um, this is what it looks like right there. Almost kind of looks like uh, sauerkraut, doesn't it? <laughs> another another German background thing, sauerkraut. That doesn't apply anymore. Oh. All right. All right. And then we have to chop an onion for this too. Yep. Yeah. So Eric's going to chop an onion. I have the cutting board right here. And um, he's online. We have uh, Stacy, who says it's her first time watching. Oh, welcome, Stacy. Don't um, hesitate to ask any questions. Amanda says hello. Hello, Amanda. Uh, and Andre says that these are his favorite. Oh, good. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so you like potato pancakes the best. That's great. They're really easy and fun. And once you start making them, it, it goes a lot quicker. So I'm taking those dried out potatoes right there that I kind of like pushed out all the excess. He's going to be, um, I don't know if you saw or not how he did that, but he basically took half the onion and then sliced down. I'll take the other onions real quick. Okay, as my onions are flying all over the place. <laughs> and you can throw them right in there. So what, I, what we have here is a half an onion, and then I'm going to hold it like this. I'm going to hold my knife this way, and I'm just going to cut down the whole width of the onion, just like this. Okay, I know you chefs out there are going to be yelling at me because I don't curl my fingers, but I try. I do, I really do. <laughs> okay. Always, huh? Then what we're going to do is we're going to turn the oven onion this way, and I'm just going to, again, cut down as, as small as possible. The smaller you cut now, the um, you don't have to mince, really, because it's going to be nice and um, nice. fine. Yeah. All right? So just to let you see what this looks like, look how fine and dice that is. And the reason why is because the onion has the rings. So by you cutting it in half and then cutting it down this way, you're cutting through all the rings and you literally are making just kind of like uh, one of those blooming onions. <laughs> That's exactly how they make them. That is. How do you like that? All right. So there we have the potatoes and the onions in there. Next, we're going to make the egg and flour mixture. So we're going to take two tablespoons of flour. It sounds like not a lot, but believe it or not, it goes a long way. I'm going to take what well, onions. Yes, I'm make a cry. Uh, <laughs> see now, we do have our onion goggles. Oh, look it. <laughs> when I was a kid, when 
I was very little. I was always. Baby, you are. Did you pass yeah, Christmas? Yeah, yeah. I um, always had an inventive uh, streak in me, and I set off to create good glasses that would protect me from uh, the onions. And it turns out that they were available online, and so I got these the following Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you look closely, they look like swimming goggles, so they'll work too. <laughs> yeah. But they really, I think they work. They do. So if I have to cut a lot of onions, then I'm wearing them. Okay, so I'm adding a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. All right, I'm just going to use my hand on that. Do you know, back in the day, and even, I, I hate to say it in my kitchen too, when I'm baking for my family, this is one of those recipes you don't really have to measure. Measure the first time you make them, and then you can just throw things together because it's going to go really easy. Baking is different than cooking. Baking, you have to follow the recipe. You do. But cooking, you just get the feel for it, and you can go and have your freedom. Exactly. Um, so, are you adding anything? You're adding some pepper. pepper. I'm adding some fresh ground pepper. Um, so, Kathleen loves potato pancakes. Uh, she has, her household has a debate over sour cream or applesauce. So, <laughs> we'll get to that one at the end. Very good, uh, very good. And then, uh, Melissa said that... Her mom made potato pancakes all the time, but she grated the onions into the Okay, absolutely. You can definitely do that. If that works for you, by all means, you can grate them. And for people, like if your kids don't like onions, that might actually be smart to do because you don't have the big chunks of onions in there. All right, so I'm going to crack two eggs. Woo, look at that. Jeez. Okay, two eggs in there. Sharon confirmed that the onion goggles do work, so you can find All them right. online. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely work. It's crazy, these little things that help. Especially if you have a lot of onions to crack. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. I made just like a little scrambled egg, basically. I'm going to pour that in there. Okay, I'm going to mix that up. Yeah, should I make this? Sure, whatever you want. All right. Mixing this in. Now, did we, uh, I wasn't paying attention, did we salt this already? We added a little bit of salt in a there, little yes. Bit of salt. After they're fried, then you can add more salt. All right, so I'm just mixing it up here. And uh, this is what it looks like. Everyone's getting all coated and nice. It kind of looks like bland coleslaw at this point. Um, but soon we'll fry it and give it some color, and then it'll come to life. I'm missing my quarter of a cup. About a quarter teaspoon? My quarter cup measurement. Oh. All right. Oh, there's nope. a third. No, I think a quarter cup. <laughs> okay. So what happens, this is what the mixture, as Eric just showed you. You can throw other things in here. If you want to throw some chopped fresh parsley, you can. Um, it really, the sky's, again, the limit. This is one of those uh, really good recipes. Oh, just so you know, because there's every size potato under the sun. You have these size potatoes. You have this size potato. They come in the same bag. So obviously, if, you, if I say four potatoes and you do four of these, you're going to get a much bigger volume than these. So the rule of thumb is about a cup of grated potato per potato. So when you finish grinding them, you should have about four cups of gr grated potato. All right, so now, now comes the frying part. Woo! So we have the oil in the pan. I think I'm using gonna... a cast iron pan. Cast iron is such a great pan to use when you're in the kitchen. It takes a little patience and time in the beginning when you're first, um, cooking with a cast iron pan because you do have to season it. If you don't season it, they rust like literally overnight. So you want to make sure that you season it well when you first get it. Give it a little TLC, but after a few times of using it, it's going to be your favorite pan in the kitchen. I can guarantee it. So I'm just wondering, oh, there it is. Okay, good. I got scared. I didn't see my little red dot. I thought you blew a fuse. <laughs> that would not be good. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to let the oil get a little hot. Let me take a little... Drop here. It's not uh, yeah. Yet. So, what was that test you just did? I just threw a couple of little pieces of potato in the corner here, so that I can tell when um, when it starts to sizzle, and I know it's hot enough. Cool. 
Yeah, just make sure you don't see that half the kitchen. <laughs> We're redoing one of the bedrooms so that we have all the stuff in the other half of the kitchen. The wonders of, of TV here. Okay. So, um, the fun thing about all kinds of, while we're letting that cook, I'm going to let you know. You know what, Eric, why don't you start working on the sriracha mayonnaise while we're doing Oh, that? yeah. You can get really creative with what you're going to serve these potatoes with as well. Um, think it's just a baked potato pretty much. It's kind of like the same taste. So you can add cheese on top of it if you wanted to. Not that it's traditional, but. <laughs> some people do sour cream. Some people do applesauce, like one of our commenters uh, pointed out. But um, I like to do something else a little bit more fun, a little bit more spicy. Um, spicy as I add mayonnaise. We're gonna do sriracha mayo, which is very, very, very simple. You just add a few tablespoons or the remainder of your bottle uh, oh, of sriracha. Oh, we're gonna do smoked paprika too. A little tiny dash. Yeah, about a quarter of a teaspoon. Oh, you only have a little tablespoon there. Yeah, not very much left in the mayo. Eric's been cooking with me in the kitchen since he's a toddler, so. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit of smoked pap. And then I'm gonna add just a drop of sriracha to your liking. I like mine a little bit more rachi than most. Uh, also, if you like like spicy wings and stuff like that. You can make this as a dipping sauce, uh, which is great to have around. Okay, so now what I'm gonna be doing is the sauce. <laughs> so we'll get back to that in a second. Now I'm gonna take that potato, a scoop by scoop, about a quarter of a cup at a time. And again, this is up to you. You can make this any size you want, but a quarter of a cup is kind of like a nice portion. I'm gonna put three in the pan, in this size pan. Hi, Maggie. So we have a 10 inch uh, cast iron here and it can only really fit three comfortably. This you don't want to overfill your pan because uh, then it'll cool down and you won't fry, you'll just get soggy. Plus it'll be hard to flip them when you have to flip them. So what I'm taking is my spatula and I'm gonna smash it down just like this. Cause I want them nice and thin and flat. Look at them sizzling away. Ooh. So like smash burgers, you lay down a big a big ball and then you smash it in? It's going to take about three minutes on each side till they're nice and golden, okay? So what's going to hold them together is the egg and the flour. Kind of like makes a little bit of a glue per se. And then that'll um, hold it in there. Awesome. Okay. Cool. This is the time chickens are starting to lay eggs, so it's great to go to the farmer's market and get fresh laid eggs. Ooh. You can't even compare the difference between the two. These are the commercial store-bought ones, but the homemade, uh, the homemade, <laughs> the uh, farm eggs, they're Home usually room. higher yolks, nice and rich, rich yellow. They fry differently. Yeah. You didn't think eggs would fry differently, but fresh yeah. eggs really do. They're actually richer. I think that you eat less when you have a fresh egg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think so. All right. Yeah, feel free. Today we're making potato pancakes. Feel free to ask us any questions you have as we're moving along. We're happy to answer them. Right. Did anybody, when they were growing up, did their parents put any additives to the potato pancakes? Paprika. 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 My parents sprinkled them with paprika. They add, it just makes it a little bit golden brown, and um, they always taste it delicious. I'd like to add some garlic, but I'm always a garlic fan everything. <laughs> yeah. So we're also always looking for ideas, um, what you'd like us to do. The next one that we're going to do is going to be um, whoopie pies, because this week we're going to do the uh, Pennsylvania Dutch theme. But we'd love to hear your ideas. We have some fun things that people have already suggested. And come spring, we're going to also do some fun um, craft projects using herbs and other things that you have around the house. Um, Christina says hello. Hi, Christina. Hi, Christina. And Linda uh, says that she loves potato pancakes and she follows her mom's recipe who uses the food processor to shred everything. Cool. 
That's good. They have a wonderful attachment for the food processor that does everything all nice. Exactly. Yeah. It's the shredding the shredding um, disc, and that would be wonderful. I wish I had my Cuisinart here. <laughs> That's twice I needed it this past week. <laughs> it's stuck in the store, and we're all too afraid to go out to the store and get it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So it's getting there another minute or so, and then those will be um, done as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now we're just waiting. Is there anything that you can do um, to prevent this from going brown, or does it matter? Well, it's actually not browning that much because we rinsed it with the cold water. The cold water will keep the potatoes from um, browning. Same thing when you make mashed potatoes. If you don't put them in right away in boiling water or in water to cover, then they're going to turn brown on you. It's just how it is. It oxidizes with the air. Yeah. Um, so it just also really is a good idea to soak them in the water. I like, you don't have to add yeah. vinegar or anything like you do with other things. Yeah, I'm a fan of soaking all potatoes in water. Yeah. Yes. All right, back here. Good to flip. I'll see if there's right. one on so the I'm going to flip them now. Ooh, let's get the camera. I do have this fancy little flipper here that I picked up in a garage sale where I just have to go underneath it like this. And then just easily turn. Nice. But if you don't have one of those, then you can just take a spatula, slide the spatula underneath, and use a fork as a second turn. Oh. Okay? So once again, I'm going to slide the spatula underneath there, take a fork. I'm kind of holding it in place with the fork and then turning it. Cool. Okay. So there, that goes there. And then while I'm waiting for that to fry up, I'm going to get some paper towels ready because you want to drain them. They're going to come out of that hot oil and they are going to be um, very oily, greasy. You want to get a plate for me? Or we're going to put it right on there? Sure. Um, we have some people online. Kathleen, who commented earlier, said that paprika was added to everything in her household. Okay, so you must be Hungarian or Romanian background because that's how it was in my family yeah. too. <laughs> We buy it in big tubs. Yes, yes, we definitely do. And Maggie says that um, she saw that we did bread, but now she's asking about Pennsylvania Dutch pretzels. Oh, pretzels are fun. That's a good thing. We can do that we one day. Pretzels. That's a great one. And we'll even use something from Pocono Soap on our pretzels. How do you like that? <laughs> I actually made pretzels uh, a few weeks ago, and I had a really good time. I had a hard time finding one of the ingredients, so we'll have to... See if we can buy malt online. Okay. Yeah. I would think that um, Earthlight, like one of the health food stores, would have that. Huh. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. So here I go. I don't need to use my second fork thing now because they're all fried up. Yeah. All right. Like I said, today we're making potato pancakes. And we're just about to finish up. We're pulling some off the uh, the pan right now. But you can ask us questions, all that you have. Our recipe is posted on our Kitchen Chemistry web, uh, website and our Facebook page. So uh, you can find our recipe there. We are filling up our time in quarantine by making some of these videos on Facebook Live uh, to help fill up our time and to uh, yeah definitely keep us busy. So we're trying to do two of these shows a week. Um, what are we making on Friday? Friday we're going to be doing whoopie pies. Whoopie pies, all right. And hopefully we're encouraging you to feel comfortable in the kitchen and to step out and make some of these fun, easy things. I put a lot of thought into um, the, pro the program because I want it to be accessible and easy for you guys to do at home. Um, it's really, really fun to try new things, and if ever there's a time to do it, now is the time. Yeah. Let's, uh... All right. So we're not going to sit here and fry all of these in front of you, because that'll be boring. <laughs> but <laughs> what we'll do is... We have some that I made before. And we put these on a nice little plate. And things are starting to grow in the garden. I actually, whoops, this one's going oh. a little bit. I actually have a little um, baby chives that we just picked up out of the garden. I'm They're starting to sprout. They are, so I'm going to sprinkle some on top of there. 
All right, look how beautiful, how beautiful and easy that is. Yeah, so we have a few people um, asking some questions. Okay. Kathleen would like to see funnel cake, which okay. I would like to see. <laughs> um, and then Stephanie says, it's good to see us. Aww. And that she'd love to see a good patch shoe. Oh, okay. Patty yeah. shoe's fun, too. Oh, you my God. You can do God. those savory. You can do those sweet. Yes. Patty shoe, just so that in case you um, don't know what that is, is basically a cream puff uh, batter. It's really fun and easy, again, to do. You know all the tricks. And um, I love that. And it, and it can go either way. So we'll definitely, that's something we'll do. Thanks for suggesting We'll that. consider a patty shoe. Um, and... Um, to share them, we're going to have all our recipes posted on Facebook, so definitely stick around and see them on our uh, Facebook page. Right. We already posted the potato, um, the this recipe. I will post the shir a sriracha um, mm -hmm. recipe, too. Although it's not much of a recipe. It's just some sriracha and mayo. Yeah. <laughs> so you going to have a piece? Yeah, I'll have a piece. Well, now what we have to... you with your sriracha? Yeah. Well, we also have to answer the debate of um, applesauce or sour cream. Okay. What do you prefer? Um, I don't know, a little of both. <laughs> a little of both. I'm a little bit of both fan too. I'm actually an applesauce person, but I can never turn down dairy. Yeah, <laughs> that's all of our fault here. But um, I, I think I like applesauce a bit more too. So we'll pull this aside. I'll take a bite here with a little bit of sriracha mayo on one, and then a little bit of applesauce on the other. butter that I added to the oil too. It, helps. it makes a big difference. It really does. Um, What's wonderful about these uh, potato pancakes is on the outside you get all these little tiny Ooh, you hear that crunch? little tiny threads of potato that fry up and they taste like um, the chips, the, the hot fries. Ooh. They are so crunchy. I can't <laughs> stand them. Oh my god, it's so good. Yeah. Hopefully they'll be having uh, festivals. Some of the local churches around here do potato pancakes at the festivals, but now you can also do them home anytime you want. You don't have to wait till that time. Yeah, and a bag of potatoes will last you all of quarantine, so. <laughs> That's for sure. That is for sure. Um, Maggie says that she's pro applesauce. All right. And uh, Sharon's parents used to put grape jelly on them. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Grape jelly. I'll bet you see. anything that that started one day she forgot to buy applesauce or didn't make it, and then <laughs> decided, oh, there's a bottle of grape jelly, and the kids will always say yes to that. Apple butter. I wonder what honey <laughs> would be like. Honey might work as well. That might be a good thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Very good. And, you good. know, to make your own applesauce, too, at home is very, very easy. You basically just chop up some apples, throw it in a pot with some water, cook it for 20 minutes, and then you have homemade applesauce. So... That's another quick thing if you really want to go all the way out and homemade. Yeah. But I so this is our second batch that's just finishing up here, and you can see how it fries nice. Uh, well, again, we just love using these cast irons. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in. I really, really have fun doing these things, and I hope that you're having fun as well. And uh, remember to uh, like and share this, and to also follow our Kitchen Chemistry yes. page. And post pictures if you make this. I yes. love seeing your pictures. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Especially if you have the children helping you as well. It really, really makes my day. Okay? So stay safe in this crazy times. And thanks for joining. We'll see you soon.